we let that song take us into the sacred activity of deep conscious breath. That deep conscious breath that takes us into awareness that we are in fact being breathed. We are being inspired. We are breathing sometimes with our own participation and sometimes and there's a moment where we realize, ah, oh, this is happening so easily and simply. I'm not even thinking about it. Breathing the conscious breath that moves through us and around us, regenerating, renewing, restoring, re-enlivening us physically, emotionally, <coughs> spiritually. There are miraculous moments where from one second to the next we can feel our physical fatigue and then be re-enlivened and renewed in the next moment with a thought, an awareness, an insight, listening to a certain piece of music, remembering a certain scripture or a divine idea. Taking the deep breath is essential for deepening into that place in us where we know, as Jesus knew, we are one with the creative consciousness. He said, I am one with the Father. We are one with that creative consciousness, that enlivening consciousness, that river of life energy moves through us and around us. We're simply asked to tune in to that, to open to that, to surrender to that idea. The great yogis know about the power of breath. And so we let ourselves remember. We breathe consciously and allow life energy to move through us and also to be a part of building that energy of one presence within us and around us. We become that atmosphere one presence of healing, of enlivening, we become that presence with our words, our thoughts. Literally, we walk in that atmosphere. Today, we allow ourselves to deepen <coughs> into this energy, this atmosphere in which we walk, this one presence energy, this transforming healing energy. We open to the peace that passes all human understanding. And from this place, we hold that presence of peace for ourselves, the presence of peace for all those we're thinking of right now, near and far. We hold that presence of peace for all those in struggles of any kind. In this community, in this country, in other countries, we hold that place of peace for our human family and for all world leaders that hearts and minds open to this idea that it is possible to create a world of kindness and healing and compassion, one that works for all. And so we breathe into that idea. We take the next deep breath. <coughs> we take that breath with this 
awareness, I am the presence of peace in the world. <coughs> and as you open your eyes with that idea, I invite you to turn to just one other person and say, thank you for being the presence of peace. Thank you for being the presence of peace. Let there be light, because that's important. <laughs> In the beginning, <laughs> welcome everybody. How many of you feel like you've been taking a big leap these past few weeks <laughs> in one way or another? <laughs> How many of us feel like our world is taking big leaps? Big leaps in consciousness. And sometimes we might have a moment of tiredness, I'm not sure. Sometimes you might have physical fatigue, emotional fatigue. And in those moments, it seems like it's easier for our old voices, our old messages of fear to come in. Have you noticed that? It's the perfect storm. Fatigue, <coughs> plates too full of details, one more thing wants to be done. Something else happens that feels upsetting in our own lives, our children's lives, our community, our world. Something, one more thing, one more thing happens. So I'm here today to, to invite all of us to be re-inspired and re-enlivened because there's fatigue. And it's not just from the storm fatigue. A lot of us are feeling it. A fatigue of, not one more thing. Not one more sorrow, not one more sadness, not, not again, and not that. So let us set that intention together, that we take a big leap into being enlivened, restored, renewed. Shall we do that? It's okay to say amen here. It's not, it's not a completely non-amen church. And yes, you can't give away the punchlines. We had to do an intervention with Paula <laughs> at Canuga. I was telling a story, and she she yelled out the punchline. So we've done the intervention. She's on probation. <laughs> so the message title today, and by the way, back to Canuga. Uh, that's our Unity Conference. For those of you who don't know, a lot of us go every year. And to, this year was special for me because they invited me to keynote. That was a very, it's a wonderful, you know, thing to be invited, but by my colleagues, it's, it was a lovely blessing for me. And I want to thank every. You did a great job. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> this is bothering me. It's weather. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody who was holding the consciousness here, holding all of us in prayer and consciousness here because a lot of us had to do a lot to evacuate our homes and then go to Canuga from evacuation. You know, so I, it took a lot for all of us to get there. I want to thank David, who's just the most wonderful energy holder in my life, who just keeps holding the space even when I forget to be peaceful. <laughs> So thank you to everybody who really had to do a lot to get there. Um, so the message today is out of this book, The Power of Now, and it's also the book we're doing for our Wednesday book group by Eckhart Tolle, and it's a powerful book. And I invite you to come and join the book group, even if you haven't been there already. We just did start the book September 5th. And we're likely to read one paragraph and then we talk about it. And it's a powerful book group. It goes way beyond being a book group, by the way. So let us begin at the beginning. It's always a good place to begin. What, pray tell, is a big leap? We talk about big leap in consciousness. What's a big leap? What does that mean? Uh -huh. An aha. Uh -huh. That's a professional term. Aha. Uh -huh. It's an aha. Uh -huh. I love that. What else? Somebody else? Out of your comfort zone. 
Out of your comfort zone. Trust. trust. That's a big leap. Trust. An epiphany. An epiphany. Faith. What? Faith. Faith. Faith is a big leap. It took me a long time to realize I didn't know how much faith I had until I needed to know how much faith I had. <laughs> right? <coughs> faith. Did you say something, Paul? Oh. <laughs> What's an I mean, what is a big leap? Actually coming into awareness and learning what awareness is about. When you have come into awareness, your whole picture opens up. Your whole picture opens up. It's another way. A lot of us talk about waking up, the awakening, <coughs> our perspective shifting. We know in the Bible it says, if you have eyes to see and ears, ears to hear. Ears. Not talking about the regular senses, y'all. Talking about a deep inner hearing, a deep inner listening and seeing. And so a big leap is something that changes us. You might call it a metanoia, a change of our heart, a change of perspective. It's something that turns us from one way of seeing and hearing to another. A big leap is what's happening all over the planet right now in so many different ways. A lot of us call it the awakening. One of my big leaps is what I call changing the what-if mind pattern. And Eckhart Tolle talks about it in his book. He says, if you found yourself in paradise, how many of you have found yourself now and then in paradise? Okay. If you found yourself in paradise, it wouldn't be long before your mind would say, yes, but... Oh, some of us here know what we're talking about. Ultimately, this is not about solving our problems. It's about realizing that there are no problems, only situations to be, well, to be dealt with now, to be accepted as the isness, to tap into our wisdom and creativity and faith, to move through each situation. So the what-if mind pattern one of my big leaps was many years ago at Lake Powell. Have any, any of you been there, Lake Powell in Utah? Big canyons, powerfully sacred place to the Ute people, the native people. I was on uh, sleeping on the back of a houseboat. My companions were in an RV up the hill. And I was sleeping on the back of the house, and I was thinking, wow, this is paradise. I mean, have you ever been to the desert and looked at the night sky? Wow. You know, there are some children or people in the world who've never seen a night sky without city lights. It's incredible. So I, on the back of the house phone, I'm, oh my gosh, I'm in paradise. There's, the stars are just hanging. I'm, I'm a part of the one presence, I'm a part of the one presence, the universe, and I looked up and there's a star that's kind of surrounded by darkness. I mean, it's standing out, probably now I would realize what planet it was, but it was just hanging there and all around it, dark space. Thought, wow, that's an amazing star. And I'm in paradise, I'm at one with the universe. But what if, what if somebody comes up and causes trouble for me? I'm sleeping on the back of this houseboat. I'm a woman alone. And what if, what if somebody comes to cause trouble with me? And I look up that star, and I swear that star, I can't do the accent, but that star said, and, so, <laughs> what? Now, when you get the difference, it wasn't, so what? It was, and, so, what? Well, what if David and Santa Barbara and the people I love there, what if there's a fire and the house burns up, and what if people I love and adore are hurt? And, so, what? Well, what <laughs> if... <laughs> And I kept going on. And I, have you ever done that? I kept bringing up, well, well, what if all of my fortunes are gone? 
and I have nothing left. And so what? What? And what I began to realize is no matter what, the the all that isness of me, the I amness of me, the eternal one presence of me goes beyond any what ifs I can come up with. That was a big leap for me to realize I am okay in this place, in this moment, no matter what else is happening around me and in my world. Amen. That's a huge leap yes. for someone that my family used to call me worry wart. <laughs> I don't know why it was worry wart. Did anybody ever else hear that phrase? Oh, okay. You know, I part of it has to do with being intuitive. Any of us who are a little bit empathic or intuitive, we pick up when something's getting ready to go down. And as children, they're often telling you, they're telling us as children, often, here's what's getting ready to go down. They tell us in different ways. So that gets a little tricky when you can sense the energies that are going on around you. But the point is, the big, big leap is, are we eternal spiritual beings or not? And if we are, what do we really have to be afraid of? <coughs> Nothing. If we knew who walked beside us, we would never be afraid again. If we knew about the energies of love that surround us all the time, we would never be afraid again. I've been in awe watching Lesta go through the big flood at her house. Strong and steady. And have there been tears? Oh yeah, there's been tears at our house looking at our torn up house and what's going on. But are we okay beyond floods? Are we okay beyond physical problems? Are we okay beyond our beloved's passing? Are we okay? That's the big leap. And when we're out of that feeling, when we're not feeling that sense of being okay, then we have our inner work to do. The big leap. So, the quantum leaps this book proposes, the quality of your consciousness at this moment is what shapes the future. That's a big leap in human consciousness. If I'm going in circles in fear, I'm likely to create an atmosphere of fear, and others are going to be affected by that atmosphere of fear. It's called the fear atmosphere. Say that real fast, it's a fear atmosphere. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stop having fun now. Okay, so the quality of our consciousness is at this moment, not the future, not the past. All we have is right now. I mean, the quality of my consciousness is affecting how I'm creating the future. That's basic unity teaching. Now, here's a clincher. Everybody hold, just don't hold your breath. Take a breath. <laughs> the promise of salvation is not in an illusory future, though right here and right now. The promise of saving ourselves from these crazy, wacko thoughts that we have, that we drive ourselves crazy, that we scare ourselves to death with, that saving energy of remembering who we are, remembering there have been those who've shown us a way of consciousness that we can tap into and learn from and be a part of. Jesus said, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world, end of the age, end of that old thought pattern, end of that old fear pattern. We are breaking mind patterns that have dominated human life for eons. Now, when somebody asks, when somebody says to you, my life doesn't mean much, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing in this world of, of things breaking apart right now, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm going to invite you to remind them. You can use this phrase. We are breaking mind patterns that have dominated human life for eons. That's what we're all doing. And some people don't know they're doing that. Big leaps. So here's where we've come from. I use this at Canuga. Those of you who are there, just take a little nap. We're going to go through this. Here's where we've come from. Now, a lot of you like to do genealogy, so I'm going to help you out a little bit here. The galaxy in which we live is 100,000 light years wide. Big. 
A single light year is equal to six trillion miles. Now, are y'all keeping up so far? <laughs> our nearest neighbor, the Andromeda galaxy, is 2.3 million light years away. That's our nearest neighbor if we need to borrow any sugar or bread. <laughs> The Earth is revolving at 900 miles per hour and orbiting the sun at 19 miles per second. This is why I like to twirl, because <laughs> we are twirling right now. And, oops, we are moving as a solar system at 40,000 miles per hour around the center of our galaxy. Our galaxy is expanding at 12 million miles per second. Everybody take a deep breath. There's a lot going on while we're evacuating for hurricanes. But I want to remind you of where we've come from, what we have been through to get here. What did Jesus say? You're the light of the world. He wasn't simply talking about having a light heart and a kind heart. He, Jesus was talking about we are literally made of light. Charles Fillmore said, we have within ourselves a greater capacity and infinitely greater magnitude that stretches back to infinity itself. So, when I say to myself, or when someone else says to me, I don't know what to do, it's all just getting crazier and crazier and I have no idea why I'm here, I have no idea why I signed up for this, I don't know what to do, we need to remind each other. We have capacities that stretch back to infinity. We are coded and designed to know what to do in these days in which we are living. In fact, we were born and trained and already prepared for these days when we got here. Breaking mind patterns. I want you to just take a deep breath and think about what are the mind patterns that human beings would do well to break? Because when we're born into a culture, a religion, a family, a community, we're given certain beliefs and mind patterns, and we accept them as truth until there's an epiphany, an aha, until there's an insight, and dare I use the word, until there's revelation, the revealing of who we are and why we're here. There's revelations going on all the time. It wasn't just for one guy named John. There's revelations going on all the time. And as I said at Panuda, I predict we're going to have more and more revelators. I don't know if that's a word, but there's going to be more and more people giving forth revelations of truth in their songs, their writing, their speaking. There has to be because we're made for these times. So we're seeing and hearing more deeply and fully at this time. We might have to break a few mind patterns to get there. So one of my biggest mind patterns for which I am eternally grateful, a mind pattern that was handed off to me by my culture, my Pentecostal culture, and the mind pattern was homosexuality is wrong. That was the mind pattern and belief that was given to me. I did not question it until I began to awaken enough to know something's off when I'm told God is love, but some people are wrong. I had to allow a mind pattern to break apart in me and move out of me. Now, I don't know if you'll agree with this, but in the scriptures, we talk about demonic presence and that we have to get rid of that and allow spirit to take up full residence in us. Well, in the unkind mind pattern, a lot of hurtful things can happen. <clears throat> so in October 1983, October 13th, 1983, I was at Cathedral of St. John the Divine taking part in a healing service, and I was one of the ones that where a line formed and people were coming to through my line and I was doing what we called hands on healing, laying on of hands. And I was touching the sides of their faces as they came forward and I would pray in the name of Jesus be thou every whit whole. Healings were happening, miracles were happening. 
It was a powerful night at the Cathedral of St. John in the Rhine. But in my line, I began to notice all those folks that I knew as being gay. I said, well, why aren't they in anybody else's line? <laughs> They're all in my line. And as they came forward and I would go to put my hands on the sides of their face, they would just keep on walking into my arms into an embrace. They initiated the embrace. And I began to realize that there was an old mind pattern in me breaking apart. It couldn't hold anymore. That Pentecostal teaching that said that anyone was unlovable, that anyone was not made in perfection. That mind pattern broke apart in me. And remember, you know, when you feel energy, I could feel something move away from me. It was an energy that didn't feel right. It moved away from me. And what I felt then was falling into the presence of love. In that embrace, I was healed. My miracle happened. I, I know that the big leaps happening right now, sometimes we think they're not happening quickly enough, but I tell you, they're happening. And that's what I want us to pay attention to. That night, I experienced the presence of love in a way I had not experienced before. But I had to allow something to happen. I had to allow the big leap of letting go of a hurtful mind pattern. And I know I'm not the only one with hurtful mind patterns. We're all still working on them. We're all still working on letting go of hurtful mind patterns. That's just one of mine. I can tell you a story. <laughs> Whoops. In the Mysteries of Genesis, Charles Fillmore says this, I am inspiring my living substance with life. That's not enough. I'm going to inspire my life with more abundant life. But that's not enough. I'm going to inspire my living substance with life, love, and intelligence. Now, in my old training, I was taught, Jesus will do that for you. Buddha will do that for you, white buffalo woman. She'll, you know, I love all the support in my circle, but all of my circle is saying, you can do this, sweetie. All of my circle is saying, you're in charge of your faith. You're in charge of letting those mind, old hurtful mind patterns go. You're the one holding the door open or not. You have the power to transform old hurtful mind patterns. So when we look at our leaders, we look at things happening in the world and our hearts break and they will, we feel the sorrows and we will. We see, we see things disrupted and to use my favorite word, discombobulated. Things are discombobulated. It is good for me, and maybe you can try this too, it's good for me to remember old hurtful mind patterns are being broken apart. And that was never going to look easy, and it was never going to feel wonderful. The outcome is, so I want us to focus on what the good and, and wonderful and sacred mind patterns that are taking the place of unkind hurtful patterns. Is that okay? Because the big leap is to be able to say, even when things look like they're falling apart, there's a one a presence of kindness and love and peace that's permeating through everything that's happening. So when we know that we're a part, that we're participating in the unfolding of healing and the unfolding of peace, in the unfolding of transformative consciousness. When we know that, when I know that, I move through the world far more easily and far more peacefully and far more creatively. When I know that the awakening is happening through me and all of us, then I take responsibility for the way I'm seeing the world, the way I'm listening to the world, the way I'm feeling about what's happening, the way I'm interpreting what's happening, I become like this incredible painting that Alex Gray did. He's a visionary artist. 
he sees, I don't know if you can see it back there, but all around him is what the Bible called the great cloud of witnesses. But all around him there are, there's presence. There's presence all around him. And his, his, the crown of his head is open to a light. And through his eyes onto the canvas is coming light. And through his hand and through his paintbrush, light. Through his heart, light. And if you notice, we as the light of the world are invited to express light into the world. So if I know that of which I'm made, light, if I'm conscious about that, then that's what I'm expressing into the world. But when I forget and I'm unconscious and acting stupid, then what I'm expressing into the world is something else. I used to be a kindergarten teacher. I have seen more two-year-olds on the news lately than I ever saw in kindergarten. So if I know I'm light, I have to take a check on myself to know am I expressing light into the world or am I not? And for my holy companions that I'm making the journey with, near and far, I have to remember that if they're acting unkind and unwise, then I get to hold the space of peace and wisdom for them and with them until we all remember a little more deeply. And golly, it's not easy to do. How many of us can see ourselves as this? You may not have a literal canvas, though some of you do, but everything we're creating in the world, everything we're bringing into the world can be expressed as the light. Does that can you see that? Yeah. Not have enough amens here this morning. <laughs> Let's all close our eyes and take a deep breath. Oh, it is a holy thing. It is a sacred thing to remember that we are called to be the light and express as the light. It is a holy thing to allow ourselves to make these quantum leaps in our consciousness and to let go of old mind patterns that create unkindness and create the new mind patterns that are about peace and light and compassion in the world. We are light, expressing light. We are peace, expressing peace. We are transformative consciousness expressing transformative consciousness. As one of our friends at Kunduda said, we are made for these times. We are made for these times. So we'll take a deep breath on that. And we'll say, so it is and so we let it be. Turn to somebody next to you and say, you are made for these times. <laughs>